Aloha guys, welcome to JohnRemus.com TV. I want to share with you 10 concepts I feel are unique. Uh, some things I've come up with, you may have never even heard of them before, unless perhaps you've seen previous posts I've shared and videos. And they're going to focus on lifestyle and relationships and even politics. And so number one, I'm going to say, has to do with marriage. That the marriage ceremony itself is not as significant as verbal and physical intimacy. I feel like th those are really what define a person, and one should wait until after, say, the marriage ceremony or after a formally committing to each other. And that is when you are actually marrying each other when you're physically bonding and that leads and and if and it leads me to number two well then what is love and I, I think love is commitment that has been said before but what type of commitment and that's why I came up with the term the dream mate to be committed to each other's dreams to want each other's soul, not just body. To say, you know, I love this person's goals and interests and pursuits, instead of necessarily just saying you love them, because them might include your desire for their physical body, which is great, but that's not who we are. You know, all the all this physical world isn't really us. It all starts with the spirit. It starts with the mind, the soul. And what is the soul? The soul is unique creation. We're creative creatures. And we can do things. And we like to do things and have pursuits and lifestyle preferences. And therefore, what I think should happen is that should be, that should take priority and precedence over anything else you know sometimes you think and, and this is going to be number three you think that what what you need to have attraction is that oh this person's friendly and they are we have a mutual physical attraction and we you know have you know we're both decent people and the reality is lots of people are attracted to each other but in reference to number two, the dreammate idea and love and commitment, why not turn it into a science and not expose yourself to situations? Like, like for example, number four, the, the idea that, you know, maybe we shouldn't... How, how do we approach relationships? Like, do we... Like, do we want to have children and when? And I feel like it's important to develop oneself as an individual before any relationships. Uh, what I mean is really that even the term relationship is misleading. Just like the terms, oh, I want to go on a date or flirt with someone. Because the reality is all that has to do is with is with biology and desire and hormones that affect each other and then you know it's like your bodies take over and your desires control you and your desires control other people but guess what the the, the, the higher consciousness is is where we're in complete control of our lives and so number four has to do with the chakra systems and that we should want to activate our basic needs desires and wants in that order, the first chakra, meet, meet your needs. Don't hope somebody else will meet them or think that, you know, somehow you can, you know, convince someone to do that for you. Um, and and uh, you meet your needs, you meet your desires with regular self-intimacy or masturbation. You achieve orgasm and that allows you to go beyond that desire and enter into the third chakra, the chakra of self-empowerment, emotionality, 
where you want to be encouraging yourself, following your dreams, not hoping somebody will agree with you, not wanting to change other people and go into their world, but liking your world. You know, you know what type of music you like, so why not pursue everything else there is? And another bonus, I would say, on on these four ideas and relationships with other people and yourself are also wearing a wedding ring. Usually, I wear a ring on my finger when I'm in public and around, and that indicates I'm at minimum married to myself, if and or, or interested in marriage, and not available and or of course I might be actually married to someone and the truth is I am I'm married to a concept I'm married to an idea and one day that'll manifest in in in, and and I'm patient about it though I'm developing myself and my career my pursuits especially for the practical value of wanting to have security for someone to raise children but also for the more abstract ideas of wanting to reserve it and keep my energy for my own dreams and give that energy to someone only if they will use it to pursue similar similar interests and goals because if you just give away your passion and and then this will make number five so I'll do these five about relationships and and interpersonal activity and then I'll transition to some other uh, life areas. So number five is, you know, you, you give, you, you, the ego thinks things like it's best to attract or seduce many people. And the ego thinks that, oh, you know, I, you know, the, the, the only way I'm going to uh, be happy in life is if I, uh, you know, have a certain type of body or be with a certain type of person and remember a lot of people are attracted to a lot of different people so there's and but also that you, you want your dream mate to some be to, to your dream mate to be someone you are attracted to you don't and they're attracted to you you don't want to force or pretend you know that you want to be in truth and all I'm suggesting here in number five is that it's better to be with yourself than someone else. And in, in number six, I'll, I'll, I'll explain that. But, but uh, the bottom line is we have, we have choices that we can make. And why, why want to change people? You know, why, why want to... You know, things take time to change, you know, in people. And, and, and number six, it has to do with the broader idea of how we live. Do you hope that you, or wish you had a certain type of body? Or think that, you know, you, know, you, you can't have a dream made in this life because you don't have the right body? That may be. But what about next life? What about investing in your future incarnations? That's number six. And it's a really fun idea, because it also implies that, you know, I don't have to be so attached to this body. I can work on future incarnations, invest, you know, maybe not have kids if you don't like your body, and invest in someone you think is tall and attractive to your specifications, and they are, they're a couple, and they have children, and maybe those grandchildren will be you. But the point being is we're... Thinking of everything is in unity. It's like, it's like number seven. Everywhere you look, it's all you. Every single person that you look at is you. And it's not always good to think this if if you're in a potentially dangerous place in public, but in in a private safe setting, just imagine. That people are you, everyone's problems, everything is all you, and every reincarnation is you, and every possible reincarnation is you. And you look at that person, hey, that's me. You know, I, I'm consciousness, I am all reality. And with that mindset, we can 
take on problems instead of and be responsible for them instead of thinking that it, somebody else can deal should deal with it or it's someone else's problem because if in our, in our future reincarnation what if we reincarnate into a dangerous place or with criminals or whatever an, an un, undesirable area then it's for us to move society forward and to think of it as it's all us and not just think that oh I can be rich and be isolated and be in a, you know no it's it's uh, we're all one it's number seven no that's that's number six rather okay so number seven switching to another idea is uh, is the, the idea that it's not good to name people roles of father uncle grandfather older younger brother cousin mother and etc all these roles imply uh, expectations which you didn't really choose you know when you came into this world so and, and it also implies the submission and authority where you pro program you're programming yourself to follow someone you're programming your subconscious mind to think that that person's the leader that person's important and what happened in my life, for example, is I did that, used to name people such things as father, mother, etc. And that just made me angry, uh, at even if, whether, regardless of whether they were nice or not, it just made me upset that I've, in my mind, and I felt like I had to do as they expect and follow their preferences in life, you know, follow what they want, would want. And that just made me upset at them, and it, it actually made me upset at uh, women in particular. Uh, and so that's, I think, the beginning of criminality in, in otherwise sane and capable mind, which I believe I have. The, the, these manias or angers or perversions all, all start off with this this unhealthy dynamic of naming other people the role of authority in your life. Instead, I, I've t termed the concept the dream team. This is number seven, the dream team. The, the people in your life who you voluntarily and equal, want to be equal with. Be like, you know, this person's my brother. Maybe, maybe even they are your legal biological father or whatever it is. You should be able to call each other equals. And not depending, and not depend on each other. Like saying that, oh, they're my father, my uncle. I'm expecting them to support me financially, emotionally. No, you want to be able to do that for yourself, and then you can be friends, or maybe even be part of a dream team where you're equal, and or perhaps not even associate with them. Maybe call them strangers, but but take take. Take control of your life with the semantics and the vocabulary you, you're using to describe other people. And, you know, there, there's another step you can take. Uh, this is, this is, and, and by the way, you can also, of course, name people uh, friends uh, who are people, thousands of friends, people you're willing to work with, and then dream team, family. And so categorize people, right? Uh, and another thing to do, I think, is to meet with various different people. Don't hang out with the same friends, quote unquote, all the time, because that's you know not someone you're committed to for life. Your dream team, you're committed to for life. You know, you have the same goals and preferences. And uh, and number eight, I'm going to switch to over to the idea of dieting and veganism in particular which I recommend and, and prefer and I think it's practical but there are certain reasons that people might not think people might you know besides let's just forget about the animals for a second I think humans are more important than animals and let's look at not just the health either which people are aware of you know it's a health factor but there are other things like uh, certain dairy and meat farmers are subsidized so it's like people using those products, uh, it's like they're getting food stamps from the government indirectly. And, and 
also it's uh, it, it's expensive not only to uh, other people and, uh, that have to labor and do the work it's you know it's time costly and energy you know it takes a lot more to for people to work and produce one ounce of beef versus one ounce of grain for example and and number nine is is you know something unique that I've I've come up with is uh, is it the the strategy of that it's simply the breath and the the, the thoughts of the mind that control you so you you know you might think that someone upsets you but or you're in a you're in a bad mood, but really it's a lack of proper breathing and thinking. Get yourself to a safe place, first of all. When you're upset or another person is upset, extract yourself from the situation. Think, give space and seek space. Don't expect somebody else, you know, they might be a supervisor or whatever, but you know how to do be your own supervisor. You know, you, you and, and you know what to expect of a supervisor. And if they're not meeting those expectations, then guess what? You you uh, seek space and give space when there's complications and angers, and and when you're in in that place, you want to reset your mind. Don't try to force yourself to be happy, but do things that'll reset your mind, and that way you can think clearly, breathe, think rationally about how to approach the situation. Maybe communicate indirectly with email and text message or th- via a third party person. And, and you know, they're just things you can do. Things you can do to make your life nice. Make it so that you're not angry. Uh, you know, and, and, and it's not really about not being angry per se, but it's about not getting yourself in bad situations. Because if, because if you if you uh, say you want to retaliate against someone, or then guess what happens is is you just end up being it creates problems for you. So think about it for you. You you want to take vengeance upon someone that'll just create problems for you. And you know you might think that oh I wish this person were taken out by the police or eliminated from society, well, you know, only report people when you are think you're in a safe position to do so, where they won't be able to retaliate against you. So you've really got to step it up and think smarter. And lastly, my suggestion is for, for and this is for avoidance of manipulative bad people, First of all, it's how you present yourself. Are you trying to be, a, say, a cute girl? Or, and by the way, the semantics of letting somebody call you a girl or boy or girlfriend or boyfriend, all these have, I'd say, uh, unwanted implications. You know, we're adults, we're men, we're powerful men and women. It's, you know, and, but anyway, if you're out in society and you want to li- minimize the, the, possibility of being targeted and uh, taken advantage of or you know sexually or or financially what, what you want to do is is you want to present yourself as a you know you know wear a certain type of clothing maybe for women shave your head uh, you know wear glasses like this or a hat you know the, it's it's almost a religious thing it's it's kind of wearing defensive clothing you know instead of high heels maybe boots for example and and realize that manipulative people and they may just want to waste your time maybe even worse they might want something else from you but the point being you don't have to be charitable with your time to them and often you might not be able to afford to you know if you gotta look out for your own family and whatnot and and uh, 
you know, but the main thing is don't feel badly for them and don't get wrapped up in they may try to be rude and try to, you know, some some people want to make you angry. You know, that's their goal. So don't let them uh, get you for that. Uh, you know, when you're when you're when you're in the world, realize that people sometimes will try to manipulate you on simple things like offering you food or or a place shelter or you know oh come come over here because that gives them power in a situation um, you know they, they might offer you transportation like a, a ride somewhere they might they might act friendly they might offer you a job opportunity whatever it is uh, they might even get you into the conversation about something like conspiracy theories and not to say that they're all not true but it just a lot of those types of situations and people just end up blaming someone else for their problems like blaming the government and whatnot and 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 uh, number number 10 is just going to delve into that it's going to suggest that you know people in leadership positions really they should be they should actually be independently wealthy i feel to the extent that they can afford to say you know what for two or five years or whatever the term is, I want to dedicate myself to the community and nation where I live and, you know, do something, be be friendly, be diplomatic, but to pay people for that, I mean, it's one thing to pay people to be security or, or to be, to do bureaucratic activities, you know, paperwork and organizations of the government and whatnot, but to pay people who are like, Supreme Court, uh, you know, justice or president or governor or congressperson or, you know, all these positions I feel really aren't worthy of pay. They really, and and if, if it's not that they're not worthy of, it's just that they're kind of sacred uh, leadership positions where why would you want to pay, pay somebody to be nice and diplomatic? You know, maybe we could pay for their accommodations if they're traveling and whatnot, but to actually pay them, you know, it, it just just a question mark for me. It says that, well, why, you know, how do we know this person's not going to be corrupt and they're not going to be you know, potentially bribed or paid off by people who, you know, want to, you know, Whatever they want to pursue their agenda and their their lobbyists, etc. So these are my ten, I'd say, pretty original ideas, and glad to share them with you. Curious as to what you were receptive to, what was maybe one thing you liked or one thing you didn't like, and thought I might want to re-refine. Thanks for considering. Aloha.